Welcome back to Type Over 40 with me, Dan Hadley, yet again. I'm going to hold my hands up. I wasn't going to make a video this weekend. I didn't think I'd got anything to talk about. And then something, something happened a couple of days ago. I thought, I've, I've got to tell you guys about this because, let's face it, only you're going to understand. Nobody else. And uh, what happened was, I was, uh, I was going around, just around in my box room, and to be honest, actually, it was after I'd sorted out those Doctor Who bulletins for the last uh, Type Over 40, last, last Sunday. So I, I disturbed a few things. I was looking into a few nooks and crannies, and I found something I thought I'd lost. Uh, back in 1997, just after the TV movie, there, was, uh, there wasn't exactly a, a, a huge surge of new merchandise, but there was enough there was just enough, and uh, like a lot of fans, I sort of jumped right on it. And all, it was any little bits and bobs that I could get, and uh, obviously, as a as a guy then in my twenties, the uh, my car was probably my pride and joy. And uh, you know, I got through. I favoured. I, I favoured the key ring. I thought that having a decent key ring was a good badge of honour, a badge of pride in whatever franchise that you're into. And so yeah, I went for the Doctor Who key ring. So in 1997, I was in the gift shop at the Longleat Doctor Who exhibition, you know, sadly no longer with us. And uh, yeah, I, I uh, saw all this new line of merchandise directly connected to the TV movie, uh, which is, I'm sure some of you may remember, means that the seal of Rasslon and, and uh, Paul McGann's face and the new old Pertwee TV, TV movie logo was everywhere. Uh, and then this little beauty caught my eye. This uh, Doctor Who key ring there. So yeah, I, I, uh, I bought this in 1997. Thought I'd lost it. And uh, what should I find just a couple of days ago? Just glimmering out of the corner of one of these boxes, I saw this. Uh, grabbed hold of it, gave it a polish, and yeah, it's back back in use after 22 years. This is this is older than my children, this key ring. It's back in use, back home, and yeah, I'm holding it and using it with pride. If there's any little bits and pieces like this that you've got, that you know, maybe you've been using them continually for the last 20, even 30 years, you know, actually, somebody's still wearing those Doctor Who underpants, the Tom Baker ones after 30, 40 years, then uh, I think, you know, I think someone needs to have a word, uh, but anything else, you know, any, any other bits and bobs that you're still using, something out of Doctor Who Adventures magazine, maybe, well, drop, a, drop a note in the comments and tell us about it, take a pick, and uh, yeah, out yourself as a, uh, does this count as hoarding? I'm not sure, but I'm really glad to be reunited with my McGann key ring there, over the moon, in fact. Um, yes, yeah, so, more conversation more talk in the group, little bits, a few bits and bobs more about series 12 coming through. I know it's not always an easy subject to, to, uh, to approach, you know, depending on how we're all feeling about it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, the way I look at it, you know, I'm pretty open about my feelings about uh, the current regime of Doctor Who. I have to be. I mean, I recorded podcasts for uh, whatever it was, like 12 weeks, all last autumn, so everybody knows how I feel. They've heard my journey with it. If you haven't, the, uh, I'll drop the links in the show notes to the, the whole uh, Type 40 uh, stream and you can sort of catch up if you feel so inclined. But yes, I know what the place that I'm at with it. And, and sometimes people do need to, um, sometimes people do need to, need to vent their frustrations or they may, may feel that they've got something gen genuine to say or a, a topic to explore. That's why I post it up. Anything like that, it's, you know, it's for the community. None of us, including myself, are obliged to say anything positive or negative we can always we can always scroll past and um, yeah some of us some of us maybe do post the same things over and over again or have the same instincts Dave Yadley <laughs> is it really necessary to po to uh, post boo after every picture I'm, I'm not entirely sure but uh, you know if all joking apart you know who does it harm at the end of the day, we're all we're all grown ups. We can we can just as easily step past that which we're not interested in reading, or or any other uh, members of the of the Facebook group that we perhaps we we don't wish to interact with. You know, it's we can't. It wouldn't do for us all to be the same, would it? Um, but yeah, I'll continue bringing the news such as it, such as it is whenever there is news, and um, yeah, well, you know, well in the meantime, there's a whole lot other flavors 
brand of Doctor Who for us to enjoy, for us to talk about and to share. Speaking of which, yeah, on the Facebook wall this, uh, this morning, I posted up a link to a new article about the documentary that's on Radio 4 Extra next weekend. The, uh, what's it called? It's called the John Pertwee Hour. It's, uh, that's really, really nice and old school, isn't it? The John Pertwee Hour. I like that. I think, I think you would like that too. Uh, yeah, with, with Sean Pertwee, of course. And um, yeah, it's, it's on three times on Saturday. So you've got plenty of opportunities to catch it live. And uh, afterwards, I think they're putting it out as a podcast as well, which anybody all over the world will be able to get access to. So that's fantastic. Uh, but yeah, what I, what I was wondering, what I'm itching to find out, is uh, how much of this is the, uh, if it's the brainchild of this man, Mr. Sean Pertwee, or not. Or if he was just approached to be the, uh, to be the front man for it, you know, after it was all put together. So yeah, I, I, if anybody knows, knows the genesis of this documentary, I'd be really interested to hear. Uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be quite special. This It's obviously going to be uh, broad and encompass Pertwee's entire career. And it may even pull on the heartstrings a little bit. But, um, you know, it's, it's just nice to have little nuggets like this in between actual Doctor Who, whether we're watching it on Blu-ray or waiting out for the TV show, I think. What else, what else are you talking about? What else is everybody talking about? Paul, Paul, you're back. Paul Openshaw, Mark Hamill as a potential doctor. A few years ago, I would have, uh, I'd have laughed that off, you know. But I think Mark Hamill's, I think he's a good, solid actor, and he is quite eccentric, isn't he? Uh, he doesn't, I don't want to say I agree with everything that he says or in the way that he conducts himself. But um, you know, I, I, he's a very difficult person to to dislike, and he's genre royalty. So, uh, God, yeah, get him into Doctor Who somehow. Get him in. There is a queue. Get to the back behind Sean Pertwee and a few others. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. The more I think about it, an American Doctor? No, why not? Why not? What else have we got here? Jeff Brown. Jeff, you've been to... Oh, that's you're sharing more pictures from Supernova. Wow, yeah, there's all these Doctor Who props and costumes and things like that. Yeah, I mean, with these, I'm not sure how many of these, whether they're the same ones that are going all over the world now since the Doctor Who experience closed, because there are the several, the several Bessies, aren't there, at any given point all over the world. But uh, yeah, anything, any events anybody's going to over the summer, please, if you feel so inclined, come and share with us, come and show us the pictures, or just tell us you've had a brilliant time make us all jealous you know <laughs> we like nothing more than that but yeah interact bring us whatever you like uh, or, yeah. i'm also looking forward to this uh, web series beginning tomorrow for six weeks on youtube this is a this is a real event uh, the, the people who put this together dalek 63 to 88 channel have teamed up with a guy called Gav3D, who also goes under the name The Mind Robber, who, in my opinion, puts together some of the most amazing digital Doctor Who related artwork. Uh, it's all, none of it's, none of it's particularly official. I, I think some of his work has turned up on official Blu-ray, DVD release and things like that. But he's been, he's been developing his own 3D art and recreating Doctor Who history digitally like that for god it must be 10 years now and so for them to be devoting directing all of that creative impulse and all the knowledge of dalek uh, 63 to 88 into a, a web series you know it's um that's going to be something special it really is i think i mean obviously it helps you if you like the daleks but if you're a doctor who fan and, and claim you don't like the daleks pull the other one quite frankly uh, but yeah I'll, I'll be sharing those every week, or at least I hope somebody will be sharing them, and, and you know we can we can comment and, and watch along with those. It's going to be great. I can promise that's going to be unmissable. Uh, well, what else are we talking about? Yeah, oh, 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 the Children in Need project. Yeah, Children in Need is a really, really worthy cause. Uh, the uh, telethon can be a little bit like uh, pulling teeth now, can't it? But uh, Doctor Who and Children in Need, we know this. You know, their connection stretches back decades. And uh, you know, like I'm sure you do, I I give, and um, you know we don't have to watch and listen to whatever it is they get up to, do we? But uh, you know, somebody's bound to like it. I'm sure, the children enjoy it, and uh, whether the 
stars enjoy doing it all night. Sometimes it can be fun to watch them squirm, can't it? I mean, uh, let's face it, Jodie Whittaker made me squirm a few times last year, so <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Hadley, what are you saying? What are you saying? Podcasts. Yeah. I'm really happy with the reception of the po- to the podcast over the last week. You know, myself and Adam O'Brien have hit you with two podcasts, haven't we, <laughs> in seven days. God. Uh, yeah, there was first I was a guest on Leaf and Mullet, and then Adam was uh, good enough to come in for Type 40. So, uh, yeah, both of them are, I like to think both of them are fun, breezy listens that, uh, you know, they're generally anchored in Doctor Who, but we talk about a lot of things there. And uh, although Adam's not here, at least, I, at least I don't think he is, I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, Adam's not here at the moment. Uh, it's very likely you'll be hearing more from the both of us together in the not too distant future. Uh, so yeah, get on those. Listen to us talking about Time Bandits. Listen to Adam talking about his childhood, growing up watching Doctor Who. Unmissable. We spoil you. We really do. Um, other than that, yeah, a couple of minutes just to talk about uh, two other podcasts. Glenn Jakeman, Glenn and Lee on the Nerva Beacon podcast from the Back to the 80s page. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's a little, it's a little bit, it's a little like type 40, isn't it? It's like type 40 after dark, really. Yeah, Glenn says, doesn't mind dropping the old F-bombs uh, every now and again, does Glenn. Uh, but yeah, I, I love that show. I genuinely do. Look forward to it every time a new one drops. The latest one is also about the Daleks, so you couldn't have timed that better, Glenn. Uh, Keep them coming. I'm glad to hear you're going to be back recording more regularly. And uh, Christian, Christian Baisland, the uh, legend of the, of the Travelling Tardis. I've not been listening to it that long, but I really do enjoy it. It's got this sort of really fun gang feel to it. And uh, yeah, on the latest one, he's got a, a real life weeping angel. Not sure. Not quite sure how he's managed that. Or if it's, must be, it must be safe to listen. I don't think they say a great deal. Uh, yeah, so give those a go. If you like what we do on Type 40, it certainly gets my seal of approval as a listener and as a Doctor Who fan. Um, what else? What else is there to talk about? I mean, yeah, this is what I do on a Sunday, really. Listen to a lot of podcasts and catch up with day-to-day household things. And uh, you know, one of the things I've been doing is having a move around in here. And I've repositioned the webcam. And I've, I've only just worked out that even though it is a HD webcam, uh, it was uh, slightly out of focus and things like that. So you can now... <laughs> I'm not sure whether you'll uh, find this a blessing or a curse. You can now see me that little bit sharper, see this place that little bit better. And yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of a move around because I will be making more of these videos. And well, yeah, having people around, it's, you know, it's really nice. You sort of make it nicer, isn't it? It's only polite. Uh, but yeah, what I was wondering about is I haven't got a name for for this room yet. You know, I don't know, call it a man cave, a Doctor Who cave, because I, I work over that side and do all my play over this side. Uh, but yeah, what shall I call it? What do you think would be a good name for this entire space? So like the, the, the Dan Cave, the Den, the whatever you want to call it. I'm really interested in your suggestions. Pop them in the, com- in the comments. Keep them clean, if you can, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, oh dear, oh dear, what have I done? Uh, yeah, so I'll be really interested to hear what you've got to say about that. Uh, and yeah, over the over the next few weeks, as I keep on making these videos, right? So, <laughs> as I keep on making these videos, you know, you notice a few a few little things change here and there. And uh, hopefully, as the videos keep on coming, you'll keep on watching, and uh, keep on listening to those podcasts and keep on interacting on the wall. Thank you all for your time on this sunny-ish Sunday afternoon and whatever else you're doing for the rest of the day wherever you are in the world have a fantastic time I'll speak to you soon bye